Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, The Horde. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man in a landfill discovering a body tied up and covered in dirt. He stares at the body intensely, the ash and burnt garbage of the dump surrounding them. The scene cuts to a police officer named Ausum, attending the funeral of his fallen colleague, the dead body in the landfill. With him are his fellow team members, Aurora and Jimenez, the same man who's shown at the beginning of the film. Afterward, the widow approaches Ausum. She is close to the team because of her husband. She asks him about the necklace he's wearing, and he says that it was given to him by his aunt. The widow knows that the team will avenge the death of her husband. She makes him promise that he will protect all the team members because she considers them her family. Later that night, the team sets out on an unsanctioned mission to take out the gang responsible for their fallen officer's death. The gangsters are residing inside an apartment building on the outskirts of the city. They all bring guns and wear ski masks to hide their identity. The team approaches the building. Jimenez wants to take out the guards stationed outside, but Ausum stops him saying there's no meat to spill blood. Jimenez blatantly ignores his instructions and still kills the guard. The two of them argue briefly, but they enter the building afterward. Inside the stairwell, the officers encounter the building's superintendent. He tells them that the building is condemned and that the gangsters they are looking for live upstairs. They continue upstairs, where Jimenez spots a woman who turns out to be a janitor. He lowers his gun and continues his search. They hear the voices of the gangsters in one of the rooms and pick its lock. The superintendent reappears and tells them that he can help, but the gangsters hear the commotion outside and shoot at the door, hitting Jimenez in the neck. One of the gangsters steps out the door and kills the superintendent. The gangsters take Ausum and Aurora inside for questioning. The gang leader tells one of the guards to warn the others not to let anyone into the building. Another gangster takes one of the officers and Jimenez inside a room. The gangsters question them about what they are doing there. The gangsters then open the door to the bathroom and reveal a man with a sack on his head tied up inside. The gang leader says that the man is a confidential informant working for the police, and they caught him. He thinks that Ausum's team came to the building that night to rescue the informant. But the team still refuses to talk, so one gangster shoots the informant in the bathroom. They suddenly hear gunshots outside, and the gangsters think that more officers are coming. The gang leader shoots Jimenez in the head. One guard notices explosions in the distance while he's locking up the doors. Inside the room, the gangsters open the door to figure out the source of the noise, but suddenly a zombie enters and kills one of the gangsters. They fire at the zombie, but it refuses to die. They run out of bullets, and the zombie manages to kill another gangster. The gang leader brings out a shotgun and shoots the zombie in the head, killing it. More zombies appear, and both the gangsters and the officers manage to escape barely with their lives. When they finally barricade the door to the roof and stop the zombies from coming, they look at their surroundings and see that the entire city is burning and explosions are happening in the distance. Even worse, below them are hundreds of zombies making their way to the apartment. This implies that a massive zombie outbreak is happening in the city, and they are trapped in this apartment building with no hope of rescue. The injured male officer starts to panic, but the gang leader tells him to be quiet. Ausum suggests that they work together so that they may make it out of the apartment, despite the protests from the other officers. The group makes their way down and into the room they were previously in. They take the remaining guns inside and try to patch up the injured officer with whatever they could find. Ausum goes outside and comforts Aurora, who's still stricken with grief after losing Jimenez. She questions his decision to work together with the gangster. He tells her that they have to, or else they will not get out of the apartment alive. The two of them get into an intense argument, and Ausum reveals that he knows that Aurora was sleeping with the officer they buried early that day, despite him being married. Aurora had told the man that she was pregnant with his child, and this distracted that officer while on a mission fighting against the gang, and led to his untimely death. After this, they try to go down the staircase, but they hear zombies from the floors below, effectively cutting them out from using the ground floor to escape. The gang leader suggests they take another staircase. The scared gangster argues that the hallway is full of zombies, but the suited gangster laughs at him for pointing out the obvious. The group navigates their way through the dark hallway and finds the door to the other staircase. Suddenly, the building shakes violently, presumably because of an explosion. A roar and the injured officer try to remain quiet and hidden, but a zombie attacks the injured officer. Two zombies suddenly appear, causing the group to separate in different directions. The suited gangster doesn't make it to the door in time, and he's forced to fight off zombies. He survives and opens the door to safety. Meanwhile, Aurora and the injured officer are also left behind, and she screams for help. 
However, the gang leader stops Alzum from going back into the hallway because it would be a suicide mission. Alzum reluctantly obeys. The scene jumps to a roar fighting off a zombie and smashing its head with a refrigerator. Unbeknownst to Alzum and the gang leader, they are still alive. Alzum and the rest make their way down the stairway, but they find out it's been blown up. They hear the sound of someone grunting, and they open the door to find an old man with a bloody axe. He tells them to lower their weapons because he's not a zombie. The gang leader asks the old man what he's doing here. He reveals that he was the one who blew up the staircase to prevent the zombies from coming up. He sees that the suited gangster is bitten and tells him to follow him so that he can help. On the other side of the building, Aurora and the injured officer find a room where a man shot himself in the head. Aurora tells him to get the gun from the dead body. The old man reveals that they have to chop off the suited gangster's leg or else he will turn into a zombie. The suited gangster aims his gun at the old man and refuses to let his leg be chopped. The suited gangster and the cowardly gangster argue with the old man, but Alza manages to get them to stop. Back in the room, the injured officer tells Aurora what happened to the dead officer found at the dump site is not her fault, and Alzen was wrong for being mad at her earlier. She notices that his wound is getting worse, and he's about to turn into a zombie. She tries to force him to cuff himself, because she's scared for the child in her belly. But the injured officer refuses to get left behind. He gets the gun from earlier, and whacks her in the head, causing her to smash into the mirror beside her. The old man hands out a drink to Alzen and the gang leader. He tells them about his life as a soldier. He describes that he has been immersed in violence. One of the gangsters manages to get the TV working. They learn through news reports that chaos has spread throughout the city because of the zombie virus, and the military is setting evacuation routes out of the city. Aurora wakes up from her concussion. She cleans the wound on her face and sees that the injured officer is now gone. Hearing that the military is setting up evacuation routes, the old man suggests they use the elevator shaft to go down the apartment and travel to a military base for evacuation. The scared gangster refuses to go down the elevator because the suited gangster is not fit for the journey due to his injury. Housem volunteers to open the elevator doors, but the scared gangster stops him. The two argue, and the gang leader pushes the scared gangster to the floor. They exit the room and notice that the bodies of the zombies in the hallway have disappeared. Housem uses a crowbar to pry open the elevator doors, but a zombie appears from the hallway and attacks the group. The scared gangster shoots the zombie in the leg. The others choose to play with the zombie first before they kill it, but the gang leader becomes angry at this and lectures them. The gang leader tries to pry open the door, but it won't budge. Suddenly, the injured officer appears in the hallway. Halsam asks where Aurora is. She suddenly appears and shoots the injured officer in the head. Halsam is shocked by her grisly act, and he threatens to shoot her. But Aurora tries to explain that the injured officer is infected. The gang leader tells Halsam to put his feelings aside so that they can escape. They pry the doors open, but the scared gangster and the suited gangster aim their weapons at everyone else, telling them to surrender their weapons. The scared gangster points his gun at the gang leader's head and tells him he's selfish and always treated him unfairly. The two gangsters are fed up with how the gang leader always orders them about. So now, they plan on leaving behind the gang leader and the others as revenge. The two of them use the elevator and leave the floor. Hausam has not given up hope. He tells the gang leader to trust him so that they can get out of this together. They run through the staircase and make it all the way to the ground floor, only to find that the doors have been barred and the infected are blocking their path out. The old man leads them to a room where they find an armory filled with weapons to help them escape. The glass separating the zombies from them finally breaks and the zombies flood in. They run to the garage where they try to hold the door, but the zombies are too many and too strong. The gang leader finds the guns that the scared gangster took from them. He searches the garage and finds the suited gangster, who's now a zombie, eating the scared gangster. It turns out, after betraying them, the two gangsters also met with an unfortunate demise. Suddenly, Hausam gets bitten in the arm by one of the zombies. The gang leader kills the zombie by bashing his head through the concrete. They manage to close the door, but they hear the zombies coming from the other end of the garage. Hausam volunteers to hold them off while the others escape. Since he is already infected, he just chooses to sacrifice himself so the others can live. He fights the zombie horde and tries to power through them, but he's surrounded. The others escape the garage and leave Alzum behind. Alzum runs out of bullets and uses his machete to fight the horde. Eventually, he is overpowered and eaten. The remaining others discover that the zombies have been storing dead bodies underneath the garage so they can stockpile food. They fight through the zombies and find a door that leads out of the area. 
but the door doesn't budge, and they are running out of time because the zombies are coming. The old man also decides to be heroic, and he holds the zombies off while they try to break through the door. He pulls the pin on a grenade and makes a sacrifice by blowing himself and the zombies up. Aurora and the gang leader successfully make it out of the building. The gang leader thinks that their shared experience of surviving the zombie horror has made them comrades, but Aurora has not forgotten that he's the reason why her lover is dead. The movie ends with Aurora shooting the gang leader in the head. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.